Welcome on to another episode, doll. Throughout this episode, I'm going to be discussing the Autumn Investor Summit, which is a result of Autumn Awareness and the Autumn Industrial Complex. Uh, the Autumn Industrial Complex has been built throughout the last 70 to 80 years, ever since Autumn first became a concept. They have gradually changed the diagnostic criteria to make more people aware they to be diagnosed so that we can sell more interventions, as I discussed when I did about the disability industrial complex. Uh, so just to start, I'm going to turn you to some called Professor Alicia Broderick. If I just sh share my screen. And this is the point at which I can hear you thinking, oh, I, can, I can't see you, but if I could see you, I could see your little eyes rolling in your head. Oh, Alicia, people always tell me this. Oh, Alicia, you're so cynical. Not everything is about capitalism. Perhaps not, um, but you don't need to take my word for it. Why don't we ask the capitalists? And spoiler, the capitalists clearly think that autism is about capitalism, even if you do not. Market research firms are, well, all of them, are projecting really bullish forecasts for the autism markets globally over the next decade, especially for the ABA and pharmaceutical markets you might want to tell your broker. Private equity and venture capital firms are acquiring and consolidating as many autism-related assets as they can get their hands on because high demand plus low supply we all know this, Marketing 101, high potential for profit. And also, let's not forget that these industries are largely un- or under-regulated right now. So the time to invest is now, when the potential for profit extraction is at its highest before we get a lot of pesky regulations in there. And then there's the Autism Investor Summit. No, I am not making this up. I could not possibly make this up. Really? Here we go. It's coming up in, in, in April, in less than three weeks. Um, it's in Beverly Hills. Of course, it's in Beverly Hills. Um, it's an exclusive curated by that. They mean they won't let people like me in. Um, meet and greet conference that puts LLC owners selling autism interventions in direct conversation with private equity firms. Uh, venture capitalists and other potential investors and consolidators. By the way, 2022 marks the fourth annual Autism Investor Summit. So the capitalists know it's about capitalism. And the behaviorists know it's about capitalism, and they're actually really kind of good at it. So this is a, this is a book put out by, um, by some behaviorists about how to build a seven-figure ABA firm. Clearly, there's a little bit of being in it for the, you know, for the money part. By the way, the back of this book, I'm not going to subject you to it. Um, I believe it is self-published and there are enough typos on the back of the book that make me a little bit afraid of the interior of the book. Um, some of the behaviors are actually a little bit of cranky, a little bit cranky. Um, about their autism LLCs being commodified by private equity. It's a little bit ironic. So what are they talking about at the Autism Investor Summit, for example? Are they talking at these meetings about what's best or what's ethical or what's scientific or what's right or what's just for, let alone desired by autistic people? No. They're talking about which business decisions have the potential to extract the highest profits period. So who is invited to the Autism Investor Summit? It's, as I said, it's curated. I don't get to go. Um, who is invited? Stakeholders are invited. You know, stakeholders, Autism Intervention LLC business owners, ABA business owners, right? Um, investment bankers, they're stakeholders. Venture capitalists, legislators, they're regarded as stakeholders, not autistic people. Commodities are not stakeholders. Okay, I say, and just in case you're one of those people who's thinking, oh, what are you talking about? We have to crash it. Nothing about us without us. Why aren't they listening to the voices of autistic people? I love you and I appreciate you. I really, really do. But asking that question is a little bit like asking why the chickens and the soybeans don't get invited to similar kinds of things that put 
little family farms in touch with big corporate ag when they're doing um, similar, you know, buying up, scaling up private equity venture capital investment, right? The commodities don't get a seat at the table. So these stakeholders, they get together and these are the things that they talk about. All of these phrases and, and bits of language I pulled from their program. They talk about mergers and acquisitions and deals and buyers and sellers and consolidation and market considerations and payer landscapes and value-based reimbursement and revenue cycle management and private equity and apparently something called humology, which I didn't get. I had to look it up. It's probably not that important. All right, those of you who thought I was just a lunatic cynic, anybody still think this has nothing to do with capitalism? So to go back to my original framing, um, thinking about April, <laughs> uh, what are we gonna do with April? Um, awareness, autism awareness isn't inherently negative, right? But we have to ask awareness of what? Um, I argue that greater awareness of the commodification of autistic people would actually be a good thing if that awareness can lead to a disruption of those processes, okay? Um, and autism acceptance, by the way, all by itself, isn't necessarily inherently positive if it's used as a shiny object to groom consumption and to groom brand loyalty and to distract from asking the hard questions and to shield from view the ongoing commodification of autistic people. So this isn't a simple binary consideration. We can't just say autism awareness bad, autism acceptance good. We should always ask, not just every April, who benefits? The booming autism industries ultimately may or may not improve the lives of autistic people, uh, but they certainly seem to be benefiting the many, many non-autistic people that profit from their existence. Uh, thank you, thank you very, very much for your time. That's the title of my book and the QR code is just a, a link to the publisher site, which lists a much uh, detailed, um, Uh, that was uh, Professor Alicia Broderick. Uh, she spent over a decade doing research of autism history, uh, looking at how, how it got all the way from where it was back in 1943 to where it was today, to where we are now. And she does claim that we need to increase the awareness of the commodification of the, doing all this at the, uh, for money-making opportunities. Uh, if I just read something from Professor Alicia Broderick's book out to you, uh, just give me the moment. Uh, uh, Professor Alicia Broderick writes, On the heels of the hundreds of millions of dollars appropriated by the Combatant Autism Act in 2006, signed documents further influx of funding for autism genetics research noting that by 2014, a private philanthropy, the Simons Foundation, granted over $200 million to autism research that focuses mainly on genetics. In short, she argues, by 2014, the investigation of autism genetics became a billion-dollar scientific industry, and it contains to be a major funding priority in the United States. More recently, in 2019, President Trump signed into law the Autism Collaboration Accountability Research, Education and Support Act, aka the Autism Cares Act, a reauthorization of the Autism Cares Act of 2014, itself a reauthorization and renaming of the Combating Autism Act of 2006, which allocates $1.8 billion across fiscal years 2020 to 2024. The reauthorized law now requires the National Institutes of Health to fund research into developmental, behavioral, and clinical psychology, in addition to its extent mandates to fund research into the neurobiology, genetics, and genomics of autism, thus feeding the subsidizing both intervention and prevention industries 
with federal funding. It should additionally be noted that the 2019 CARES Act reauthorization also provides for NIH funding of psychopharmacological research relative to autism. So my next analysis may well be of the scaling up of the autism pharmaceutical industry. End of quote. Uh, across in America, there's a charity called Autism Speaks. And throughout the first five years of Autism Speaks, from 2005 to 2010 times, to 2010, uh, they were doing fear-mongering advertisements all over the US and actually doing it globally, such as uh, an advertisement called I Am Autism, where they go claim that autism's on an epidemic spread. Uh, autism Speaks, the co-founder Suzanne Wright and Bob Wright, uh, both of them just persistently spreaded lies and still believed that they were still preaching out that vaccines cause autism in 2016 because they were trying to frighten everyone into consuming from the autism industries and to make them empty their pockets and so on. Uh, so if I just share my screen again and we'll take a look at what kind of things they discuss at the autism industry and, and that from observations something I found online which tells us what they discuss at the Autism Investor Summit. So let's have a read. Uh, big money comes in. Big money comes in for a land grab. With mega funds such as Blackstone, CAD, FFL, Autism Learning Partners, TA Associates, Behavioural Health Works, and TPG Cadian coming into the space, there is clearly a race to back larger providers in a highly fragmented market and support their future growth. While one of the conference's most lively debates included questioning whether these large investments could be damaging to the industry, the general consensus among the conference attendees was that these investors should bring operating expertise and proven playbooks from other more established healthcare services sectors to help this nascent sector scale more rapidly. So by that, the sounds of that, they seem to care more about the industry and going to make the industry bigger about the future of that. Uh, so where it talks about the behavioural health works and intervention industry, I'll just quote someone called Elizabeth B. Torres uh, from the who read Pro Professor Alicia Broderick's book in advance. So I'll just quote from that. Autism is at an inflection point today. We are poised for a paradigm shift in autism research, education and therapies. This book initiates that shift and does so superbly. In the autism industrial complex, how branding, marketing and capital investment turned autism into big business. Learn about the history and evolution of this multi-billion dollar per year operation. Thanks to this history, we'll rem remember LOBAS, ABA and behaviorism in general, not as a science, but as a branding, rhetoric and marketing plot that transiently misguided many well-intended parents and professionals and that in so doing, profited with greed by preying on our human hopes, our trust in science, and our fears. End of quote. Elizabeth B. Torres. So, ABA has been one of the biggest industries all the way from the start, if, such as by early the low vows, he was a Norwegian immigrant. He immigrated across to America to study under B.F. Skinner, Boris Frederick Skinner, then he decided to start conversion therapy on autistic kids. He actually genuinely believed that autistic children are not real humans. And ABA has just been abused all the way from its foundation, as it's based on Skinner's box, uh, where Skinner was modifying the behaviour of rodents and pigeons. They decided to do the exact same thing to autistic kids. So if we carry on, 
consolidate or denerve our growth. As a result of robust PE activity, it is inevitable that larger players will start to consolidate platforms as opposed to limiting their investing activities to smaller add-on acquisitions. Furthermore, as valuations reach peak levels, many existing platforms may expand from new locations instead of acquisitions. There was plenty of discussion during the conference about CARD's preference to leverage its strong infrastructure to drive its expansion through de novo growth instead of m and Platforms that can demonstrate organic growth capabilities may be seen as more attractive to investors. As growing through, acquisitions is less predictable. Again, we're not seeing much about helping autistic people there. Other ways to play. I rather don't like the sound of that. One interesting theme emerging from some investors centers on identifying ancillary services within autism outside the traditional delivery of therapy. Such services include electronic record technologies, revenue cycle management, training and enterprise software all tailored to the unique needs of the space, while ABA therapy may have attributes that do not resonate with some investors. We expect to see increased investment in the ecosystem that supports the industry. Oh, that's even more. Now, if I just scroll a bit further down, payers are getting smarter. Given the autism services mandates in 48 states, commercial payers and seeing a tidal wave of demand and trying to determine how to handle the growth best. Over time, expect payers to rely on a narrower network of strong providers who offer excellent service, can manage large patient populations and deliver attractive outcomes. So we've seen there that we're trying to narrow down uh, what services they can provide. So rather than offering more options, uh, the BACB, Behaviour Analyst Certification Board, wants to stick with it uh, with inside ABA, but all of the money will go to them. Because still this day, all the insurance goes to ABA. But, uh, there's other interventions like DIR floor time, which is actually more based on science on human development and relationships which could be fa far greater it's more ethical uh, it's more enjoyable and it's more to do with having a relationship with the child you know parent and child relationships and that, that could be a great help but it doesn't get insured uh, because they be takes all the insurance so they certainly don't want what's best for autistic kids if they're so willing to just narrow down what options there is. Data is gaining more importance. As payers become more sophisticated purchases of ABA services, tracking service level data and outcomes is increasingly important. This information is becoming critical for improving revenue cycle functions, enhancing therapy programs, and providing insights back to the payers. Investors are gravitating to providers that have the data tracking capabilities to demonstrate clinical value to payers. Uh, again, not, not so much to do with helping the autistic people, it's more about the money still. Still this day, as Professor Alicia Broderick said. And what about the adult population? This is something that the neurodiversity movement keeps pointing out. They keep pointing out what about the lack of support service towards autistic adults. I quote, nearly all the investing activity has focused on early intervention and services for children. Many experts raise the question about the unmet need for adults on the autism spectrum. It would not be surprising to see a new wave of m and activity involving service providers who cater to adults 
with alternative care models. The dynamic nature of this emerging space may certainly lead to exciting activity to come. Close quote. I'll share both the link uh, uh, to that site so you can look at it yourself and I'll sh share the video which I uh, took a clip from at the beginning so you can listen to Professor Alicia Broderick all the way through a uh, full presentation as she provides a lot more which I would recommend listening to. Uh, but all of it does come down to capitalism like in 2019 in April a journalist called John Summers, he wrote an article in The Nation magazine about of how the private equities came into it. And he found out that private equities and stakeholders were involved with clinics ever since 2017. So from the year 2017. And it was all Autumn Speaks, the Behaviour Analyst Certification Board, IDEA, and all the others that brought educators into the system, geneticists, genomics, and all these different industries that get funding put towards them. Uh, they use particular tactics and so on from the capitalist playbook. And as Alicia Broderick showed, that uh, they, they know it's about capitalism, the behaviorist know it's about capitalism, all of them involved in the industry know it's about capitalism. And then a uh, problem which comes up about this is as people try to serve, you know, try to help autistic people, they're being fed a narrative. You know, you've been fed a certain narrative and by being so, this narrative actually takes us around in a vicious cycle where rather than actually helping autistic people, you actually help these industries profiteer off of autistic people a commodification rate, such as those who go to work for ABA, you know, they're the ones who keep it building, who keep it surviving, rather than allowing us to look for the better interventions which could come. Because there the, are a lot of better ones, as I've already mentioned. Uh, so, yeah, so all together, we know it's all about the money altogether so uh, as i said i will co uh, connect it in the description of uh, a bit of uh, a video of professional Alicia broderick and the website which are quoted from so you can have a read of it yourselves and please may you spread the awareness and try and increase the awareness of the commodification as i showed professor Alicia broderick asking because uh, I think if we can disrupt uh, these cycles, these circuits that are ca causing all the commodification, treating autistic people as something of economic value to put on sale, we might actually be able to disturb it and stop having such a big overdiagnosis. As where I mentioned on an alternative video of how psychiatry is now more of a marketing plot itself and basically they've done the same for every disability of what was mentioned on this video so they do investor summits every year so uh, be careful which charities you donate money to such as say uh, if you're in the us you it will be better off donating towards the autumn self-advocacy network ra rather than donating towards autumn speaks for example, Autumn Speaks spends less than 1% of its money, less than 1% of funding to actually help autistic people. Uh, through here in the UK, less than 5% is actually spent to support autistic people. But the rest of it all goes towards the industries. So very little funding that goes towards charities actually goes towards supporting autistic children and autistic adults but hardly any autistic adults get supported uh, the only support i've got is my dad and family altogether yeah i don't have a social worker anymore or anything 
all that was taken from me once I became an adult. Yes, yeah, so sir. I can say with certainty that there is a great lack of support for autistic adults, which does make things more complicated. So, yeah, sir, please help spread this message about the autism industrial complex. I do strongly recommend reading Professor Alicia Broderick's book I quoted from. Listen to her on the presentation I'll connect uh, and share it with your friends, please. If you've made it this far, thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next episode.